Planning Commission's uh, Citizen Advisory Committee uh, for the City of Louisville for uh, Monday, August 9th, 2021. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sue, roll call, please. Commissioner Gambalder? Here. Commissioner Chambers? Here. Commissioner Ellis? Here. Commissioner Schraubin? Here. And Commissioners Plank and Medulla are absent, and Chair Barker? Here. Do I have a motion to excuse uh, uh, con uh, Commissioners Gadula and Plank? Yes, I'll make a motion to excuse Mike and Kyle. And a second? I'll support. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Stand excused. Uh, do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? I have a motion to approve it. And a second? Support. And discussion? Sue, roll call, please. Commissioner Cadwalder? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Schraven? Yes. Chair Barker? Yes. Uh, and do I have a motion for approval of minutes of the uh, previous meeting of uh, July 12th, uh, 2021, our regular meeting? I'll make that motion. And a second? Support. And discussion? Sue, roll call, please. Commissioner Cadwalder? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Shraven? Yes. And Chair Barker? Yes. Thank you. Are there any public comments or communications concerning items not on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, old business. Uh, we, I, we have a uh, public hearing for 126 uh, Southwest. Um, Southwest Street, uh, Site Plan Review Special Land Use. Uh, it is a uh, public uh, hearing, so I will open the public hearing at this point. Uh, generally, what will happen is, is that we will go through um, some of our deliberations, um, and then we'll ask questions of the public. So that's kind of just the general gist of how we'll handle the uh, public hearing. So everybody will get an opportunity if they want to to speak. If they don't want to speak, that's fine. Either way you want to do it, it's fine. We will give you that opportunity at some point. So please be patient with us. Um, I think everybody who has been here before understands pretty much the process. So thank you. Um, Andy, you want to get us started? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so if you recall at the previous meeting, this was on the agenda. Um, this is a little bit of a unique application for a uh, use marijuana facility, a retailer specifically at 126 Southwest Street. So uh, this is uh, one parcel off of Main Street. This is one of the only uh, marijuana establishments proposed thus far in the city that does not have frontage on Main Street, uh, but they are surrounded on all sides by, by C3 zoning. Um, so we talked about this at, at the previous meeting, and one of the interesting things about this application is that they constructed the building um, last year in the fall and then they they got that done and then they haven't and now they want to use the building for um, for adult use marijuana purposes so the review here isn't really going to be a site plan review because that's been done it's, it's going to more focus on on the use of the building itself and not the site plan issues that we typically uh, go into however um, there are a few observations that we have in our staff report that we begun that we began to talk about at the previous meeting um, but then we, we, we stopped when we got to the parking section. So I'll just kind of rehash a little bit uh, some of the background with respect to the property. It's only about three tenths of an acre. Um, like I said, on October 12th was when, the, was when the site plan was approved for the building, but no use was permitted at that time um, other than something that was permitted by right. Um, you know, we knew at the time they were likely looking to pursue a, a marijuana establishment at that location, but they obviously have not been permitted to use it for that purpose uh, so far. Um, looking at the application, it's, it's relatively complete except for what are mostly site plan issues. Um, and again, the site plan has been approved and the building is there, so, so those don't generally apply. Um, we spent a little bit of time just going through the setbacks and the dimensional requirements of the last meeting. Those have all been met. Um, the landscaping, I know the original plan for the site, they had a series of um, like box elders running along West Street um, that were proposed for landscaping that was approved. 
Um, and where we got to at the last meeting was parking. So if you recall correctly, uh, we have a building size of 2,400 square feet, uh, 12 parking spaces on site, um, and 12 spaces are required. So by the, by the, just the table and the zoning ordinance, uh, they've satisfied the parking requirement. However, we wrote in our staff report that just kind of based on your experience dealing with some of the other marijuana facilities in Lowell, um, in some cases, the demand has been higher than what the ordinance has has, has prescribed. And so uh, the commission talked about that a little bit and where we kind of left it was that the applicant was to, you know, reach out to the neighboring uh, properties, you know, talk with them if some kind of, you know, temporary at least parking arrangement could be met so that overflow parking probably for staff uh, of the facility could occur, you know, somewhere else off site on one of the neighboring properties. Uh, the ordinance does authorize the planning commission to adjust the parking requirement standards either upwards or downwards when the uh, demand is expected to be higher or lower than what the requirements of the zoning ordinance are. So that's kind of where that where that comes from. Um, they have proposed a wall sign on the building, which it appears would be in compliance with the zoning ordinance. Again, we would take a closer look at that when they came in for a sign permit, uh, which would typically occur after approval. Um, the city requires an operating license as a condition of special use approval. So if it were approved, obviously they would have to come in and get an operating license before they could operate the business for um, adult use and uh, marijuana purposes. Um, so we didn't cover the site plan review standards in our staff report because we had covered those previously. Um, so Mr. Chairman, do you want to uh, you want me to walk through the special land use review standards first, or do you want to open up to the applicant, the public at this time, just to get some additional information and see? I think we'll do it a couple of different ways, Andy. Thank you. Um, are, first of all, are there any questions from commissioners? I know I have I have a couple, and, and one of them is on landscaping. Uh, I, I know we've approved the plan, but there are currently no trees there at all. Um, there is a back uh, back fence. Uh, there's a whole section missing. Uh, so there's a number of things there that have not been uh, completed as far as the okay. site plan goes. And I don't I don't know how we address that necessarily, but um, the entire basically the entire parking lot there that, that is not done either. Obviously, the road is not done or the driveway. Um, finally, the uh, the lighting was not, lighting detail was not provided right on the original plan, so we need to look at that, and we'll get at that under special land use review standards or yep. standards. So we'll get to that. Um, and then, um, obviously, the uh, bigger concern was that the reason why we tabled it from last month was the parking circulation, and it seems to me as though it would be proper to ask uh, Kevin uh, I assume Kevin BB is here again, uh, or Cody Newman, to uh, come on up and explain to us where where you stand on that issue, or what what provisions have been made. Please introduce yourself. Give us your address, that sort of thing. Again. Yep. Uh, this is sorry. You're okay. okay. You're okay. Uh, I'm Cody Newman with Driven Design. We're at 117 West Michigan Avenue, Battle Creek, Michigan. Good evening, uh, James McGilley, attorney of law uh, from the Coldwell Law Firm in Lansing, Michigan, 1129 North Washington Avenue, Lansing, Michigan. And I'll let you speak and we have to agree in person. Um, so the uh, commission is quite correct. There were some concerns at the last uh, planning commission meeting about the number of parking spaces available for this facility. Um, with those concerns in mind, uh, my client, uh, BTD, has gone out and approached the neighboring business, Barkus Engineering, immediately to the south. Um, they've negotiated a three-year lease, which would add 18 additional parking spaces for the use of staff and customers. Um, we believe that this would be very sufficient for the expected traffic flow and would include a buffer for additional um, busy periods. And uh, we believe the circulation would be appropriate to keep traffic off the streets and to minimize disruption to neighboring residences and neighboring businesses. Thank you. 
Sir, on the, the 18 spaces, are they on the portion of the Barkas lot that is right next to the building that, we're, that you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's two, two driveways there, and they don't connect. So yeah, Kevin okay. Levy and with BTD Holdings, um, the lot is separated by an island, so there's a right. south side and north side. Right. All 18 spots are on the north side touching our property. Okay. And so there's also a, a safety factor if you bump across the road. Right. Yeah, it's all on, it's all connected there. Um, in addition, I, I'm assuming that the lots would be marked, painted, all that. Yeah, section. they're lying. Um, they're lighting in the parking lot. Yeah. I know there's lighting there, yeah. that, but I didn't want to go in there. I didn't notice any. Um, there uh, are, if we need to repaint, obviously we would take care of that. Right. Commissioners, any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. We, we, again, we may call you back up. Uh, we're going to go through the uh, site plan review standards, and then uh, at that point, we'll probably have a public uh, discussion as well. Um, and if we have any questions, we'll, we'll just address them at that point, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. about the fence and the undone landscape and stuff? Uh, we'll cover that as we're going. Yeah. Right? You'll cover that. Yeah. Okay, so we will, um, let's walk through, we have um, six general special land use standards. So uh, you've all been through this before. We have six standards within the zoning ordinance that apply to all special land uses, no matter what they are in the city. So I'll just kind of briefly go through each one. Um, the first one talks about uh, the, the land use being designed, constructed, and operated to be a harmonious and appropriate appearance with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity. That it will not change the essential character of the area in which it is proposed. Um, generally speaking, we believe that that standard is met, although we make the observation in our staff report here that this is the only facility not on Main Street. So there might be some concern here that the neighborhood is too close, or that the site is too close to the neighborhood uh, that's directly to the south on West Street. Um, you know, we note in here also there are some other facilities like Loom and Premier Botanics, which were approved. Uh, while also being somewhat close to residential neighborhoods, but um, again, it's an observation that we have to just make for, for your consideration. Um, item B talked about consistency with the master plan. Uh, this property is in what, what the plan calls a mixed use future land use category. Um, the text of the plan indicates that that designation is intended to permit a mixture of residential office and commercial uses, but not necessarily any downtown style building. Um, so, you know, the, the plan seeks kind of a, you know, walkable, comfortable atmosphere throughout the city, not just downtown. And so, um, but it recognizes that you're not going to get downtown style development in a location like this. So, um, as far as is, is the use is, is concerned, I mean, it certainly is a, is a commercial business or a commercial use, which is, uh, you know, something that would be permitted in a mixed use designation. And so, um, you know, generally speaking, we think that it's consistent with the master plan in that respect. The third standard is that the use will be adequately served by essential public facilities and services such as highway streets, police, fire, etc. Um, so the original building uh, had utility connections available, so obviously it would be adequate for the proposed use. Because this is just a retailing operation, there's not a huge need for power, for water, for things like that. Um, this isn't a grow operation or a micro business, in which case the demands would be different. Um, so otherwise, uh, that standard is met. Again, we, we noted here on the site plan where they have the dumpster. It would be difficult for a hog to access that due to the you know, parking lot and driveway design. Um, so that's a fairly minor concern. I don't know if there's a better place to put it. It's a fairly constrained site, uh, but it, it looks a little awkward uh, in that respect. They have D, that the use will not create excessive additional requirements at public cost for public facilities and services. Um, so again, we don't believe that's going to be the case here. This is a pretty straightforward retail operation. Uh, water and sewer connections are established there. It's a fairly small lot. Um, the services that are, that are demanded for these kinds of facilities, um, one, are partially offset by the application fees for the operating license, and two, they aren't typically, you know, that much uh, more than what you would expect for other types of retailers in our experience so far. 
Item E, the use for not involved uses, activities, processes, materials, etc., that would be detrimental to persons, property, or their general welfare by reasons of excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, clear, or odors. Um, again, there would be not any growing, processing, or consumption on site. The applicant has submitted a odor control and response plan, um, including an improved HVAC system, carbon filters, negative flow air pressure, maintenance schedule, etc. Um, and uh, kind of back to the parking issue quickly, um, you know, we have some concerns with respect to just circulation. Um, it's, it helps now that they have the additional parking off-site, but we were kind of wondering if there's a lot of cars in there at the same time. Getting in and out might be a little difficult because it is such a narrow, tight, um, tight area there. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, if you are comfortable with the arrangements that they've provided for the parking lot, for parking in general, then I think you could find that that standard was met. And then number F, or item F, letter F, the, the proposed use shall comply with all applicable federal, state, and local requirements, and copies of all permits shall be submitted to, to the city, which, if approved, would be an ongoing condition of approval. Uh, they've submitted all of the necessary paperwork up to this point uh, with respect to the marijuana uh, application. Uh, to the state, and so and they've kind of demonstrated so far that they're willing to do that. Thank you, Andy. Um, commissioners, questions? Yeah, when uh, I came to us to put the building up, there was some concern, uh, even the gentleman that put the building up, that the water runoff from uh, properties around were rolling onto that site. Um, has that been addressed? Right, Osner, um, agent of the property owner. Uh, yes, it has been addressed. Uh, we put in uh, drainage retention pools in the back there, and they should be included in all the site plans that were submitted. I didn't, I didn't see them back here. So. And they were uh, approved by, they were stamped by an engineer and approved by the city engineer, so the city does have them. Okay. Whether or not they're in front of you or not, I do not know. Yeah, they're not here, so that's, that's my question. I just wanted to make sure that you were going to spend all this money and then have a recurring problem of water rolling in and causing grief and damage. So. No, yes, there's a uh, there's drainage system involved. And we uh, have talked with the owners of Speedway or several, I don't know who owns them now, but uh, they have put in uh, gutters in a drainage system to keep that water off of our property. Okay. So all the stormwater that is coming off our building is strictly ours, not uh, theirs. Okay. Ryan Closer, also agent of the property owner. Uh, the uh, retention is uh, built for two times the amount of water that the property would handle under a 100-year storm or something. I forget what the calculation is, so it's plenty of enough. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, one more. Yeah. Uh, I know I don't, this isn't in the 500 year flood, flood plane or anything, is it? Correct. Okay. Because I know we just dealt with that and I didn't realize that that dealership would have had that problem, so it was just a question I had that uh, I just want to make sure. There's no more. Yeah, the uh, 100 year flood plane here doesn't start until you're almost, actually doesn't, it's south of Bose Road. If you're going straight south on West Street, 100 years old, doesn't start to south of both. So, okay. they're well out of both lines. Okay. Uh, again, any, any other questions, commissioners? Okay. And I'd like to ask the public if they have any questions. For, and this would be for the special land use review standards. This is not the last time you will get a chance to talk about it. So, if it is a question on the uh, special land use review standards we just went through, uh, please come on forward and uh, state your name and address. Greg McClure at Southwest Street, 148. Just want to know why you're putting one of these on a residential street when everything else is on, uh, you know, out on Main Street. Why are we putting one there? With all, especially with all the traffic that comes up and down Bowser, up from Bowser Road. In, from the dealership to the gas station. 
they are in the uh, area that uh, is is um, situated so that they they, yeah, can, know. they can claim that. So we have to we have to look at it from that standpoint, and that's why we want to make sure that the the neighbors we're, we're doing everything to protect uh, the neighbors. You don't protect the neighbors. You're putting a uh, marijuana shop in there. Well. They have a right to do it at this point. Yes, so. they have a right to do it, but there's a place for it. Okay, well, we'll take that into consideration. Then. Thank you, sir. Hi. Hi. Cassie Postman, we live on 159 Southwest Street. Um, my concern is like, you have that fence there from your building from that extra parking that you just got. So if people are going to do that, how are they going to safely do that? And now they're kind of, if they're going to park in the overflow, they're going to cut through. I mean, 90% of us on that street have one to two year olds, little kids. You got extra customers going through. You can't guarantee they're not smoking their pot when they leave your shop. And now they're going to be flying down the road. What are you going to do when somebody hits one of our kids? I mean, I'm, I'm all for you guys. You have the right to have the shop there. But we all have little children. I want something set up, speed bumps, some kind of blockage, something that's going to protect us families on the street. And I feel like going onto that parking now, you're going to bring people more down to the residents. So Thank I guess you. that's a concern for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, are there any thoughts um, from your standpoint that we could do to address those issues? Well, the um, you know as far as the the parking is concerned, to the that's directly on the property to the south there. Um, I mean, there's a sidewalk that runs along West Street, obviously. So, I mean, the idea is that people would walk on the sidewalk to get out the front door of the building, which also faces West Street. Um, I can't guarantee what somebody is or is not going to do. That's obviously the intent. Um, you know, I think there, if you know, there are some concerns about consumption, you know, off the site. So maybe they get to the parking lot or something. You could certainly um, require the applicant for these spaces to put up some signage or something that would say, you know, no consumption or monitor the area. Some you know do something to kind of take that into consideration since it is not their property anymore. It's their property. Um, there's a general you know rule in the city and in, in, in its ordinance. There's not consumption allowed in any of the establishments, if I recall correctly. So um, there's not you know anyone who is consuming the product is not doing so lawfully. Um, perhaps. There's more that you could do, um, just kind of make people aware of that, and you know, inform them that hey, you can't be doing this here, something like that. I can't speak to you know traffic control, speed bumps, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I don't know which direction. I mean, I'm assuming most cars pulling out of here might head back to Main Street, but obviously, it depends on where you're going. Most road might be a nice, um, you know, route if they're heading uh, heading south sort of the highway or something, obviously the road would be a better connection to get over to M50, but. Could we, could we put a sign in the, at the parking lot saying turn left only towards Main Street? Um, and or a camera, oh. So you could do that for, for the one, for, for the actual property, for the 126 Southwest property. I'm not sure that you could do it for the property to the south because that's used for additional purposes besides just this one. And so I'm not entirely comfortable with imposing special land use conditions on other properties. Um, you know, once they're the subject of the decision here. So that would be one thing. Um, you know, again, you could, yeah, I mean, you could require, and typically you would require um, a right out, but you could require a left out heading north on West Street towards um, towards Main and have a sign or an arrow or something to that effect so people head north. You know, again, hopefully people, most people would abide by that, but there will be some who don't, I'm sure. Yes, sir. 
from Mike DeVore, 424 Elm Street. Um, just here to speak up against this location. The additional parking is great. It's a lease, though. If they sell that property, the new owner is under no obligation to let them use that parking. And also, nobody going west out of town or south out of town is going to go back to Main Street. It's a nightmare to turn left on a Main Street from West Street most times of the day. Now that it's one lane, uh, if I lived on West Street or even on Bowes Road, I wouldn't want that there. Uh, if my kid was out playing, Bowes Road has enough traffic as it is. West Street has enough traffic as it is. And even if you put that left turn lane up so they're coming out, it's only three or four car lengths before they're backed up. Then they're going to disregard that sign completely. So I've been a huge proponent of marijuana retail stores. I think it's great that we have so many of them fully in support of the free enterprise, but what a terrible location. I think it's an awful location. So I just wanted to make my thoughts known. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Frank Hosner, 325 South Division. Um, I also live on a street that people rip up and down. I have small children of my own. Um, there's not much I can do as an individual to stop people from doing whatever they do on the streets. So as a, you know, it's a public street, people can drive up and down it for any purpose, for any reason. There's already two businesses there. People coming from Bowes or from Main Street are gonna use that whether they are going to a marijuana establishment or not. Um, this building was built um, on a vacant piece of property. It's improving uh, parts of the city that was otherwise Void. Um, it is in the C3 district, and I think it is in full compliance with any and all ordinances that are going on, or will be with conditions. Um, furthermore, I fully support each and every one of these marijuana establishments that are coming to town. It's a boom in taxes. Um, these people are coming with families of their own. Uh, they're businessmen. This is not some black market operation that we uh, seem to like to think it is. These are real people that pay the taxes and they're going to bring in good money to the city. Um, particularly these gentlemen, come to know them well, and they're good, honest, hardworking individuals. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. I fully support everything that uh, the city has been doing with the marijuana establishments, and I think it's a boom for the city going up and down Main Street. You see new buildings going up, you see buildings being fixed, and uh, we're, we're seeing generally positive results of it. There has been almost zero negative as a result of all this, especially since I've been moved to town and talking to people. I think the majority of uh, comments that you're going to get are going to be negative because the people that support this just support it and aren't here to say anything otherwise. Thank you. Ryan Closner. Um, to describe this property as a terrible location for any business would be a bad judgment of any course because you're putting in a business in your town, first off. Um, second off, I also have a two-year-old. Um, I like to walk around the town hall, and I have not seen one time someone ripping out of any one of these marijuana establishments. I've neither seen anyone consume anything on any one of these marijuana establishments properties. Um, let alone on their own property, it's not seen. So to worry about that is almost, uh, I don't know, against the point and kind of trying to put a negative light on this for some purposeful reason. Uh, let's see, second, the idea of speed bumps on the road is a great idea, but then you leave yourself open to speed bumps on Elm, Jackson, Jefferson, Southwest Division, uh, any one of them. But I support that idea because there are people that like to rev their engines and fly down uh, <clears throat> to get to any one of these places. Big Boiler, um, I've seen them going 35 miles an hour easily to go to the Backwater Cafe. You could put speed bumps there as well. But again, to call this a terrible location for any business, I don't know. That's almost a purposeful negative light on something that doesn't need it especially in support of these businesses, which have brought taxpaying money, 
jobs and opportunities for a lot of people. I appreciate your time. Fully in support of it. Doyle voted yes every single time a marijuana thing came up. Difference between the other two buildings that are businesses is Main Street driveways. Speedway and the dealership both have Main Street entrances. Last meeting I was at, you told them to secure more parking. They've secured it temporarily. Still have not addressed the concern about what happens if Eric sells that property or if the three year lease expires and he finds out it's more trouble on its work. Then you're right back to the number of parking spots you had. Uh, fully supportive of all the businesses, not supportive of the location still. Closed public hearing for this portion of it only. Okay. Commissioners, any thoughts? It's nice to hear people's thoughts and opinions. Very nice to hear. It brings up an interesting point if it sells the extra parking in the roadway because there's nothing tied to it. Um, He's got his hand up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I, if I may weigh in on that, it would sure. be tied to the special use. So the special use would go away if it's sold at that point, and it would no longer, you'd have to come before planning commission again. Uh, if this was approved as a condition that the 18 spaces are required, Special use and technically in three years, that means that if they wanted to continue to operate and they did not renew the lease, they would have to come back as part of the special use permit because that was tied to it. Well, that's kind of what I was getting at, but I just want to make sure that it's black and white written uh, no matter what. So, if a different retail owner came in, it wasn't marijuana, if someone wanted to have a toy shop there, for instance, um, that would you'd have to go back through if there's any additional required there, but um, if someone wanted to use it for marijuana, it would be tied to the special use. They'd have to honor that lease or extend it at that point or buy it. They, they, they meet re the requirements of 12, you know, and it's, we're making made the stipulation on past um, observations of these shops and the more shops that are here, make less the extra parking is going to be needed. Three-year lease, I think, is an appropriate thing, and you know if they need more parking. That's customers. They're gonna they're gonna renew that lease. You know, I, I think the I'm happy they got the extra parking. I don't think it's a necessary condition. I mean, they, they, they fulfilled the 12 spaces, and they made preparations for three years for overspends. I mean, that's pretty not good. I think having that extra. Parking spaces there are absolutely essential at this point. But first of all, and, and the reason for that, in, in my thinking at least, is this is a non-conforming lot to begin with. So everything is uh, sort of crammed in. It's very tight, and to have those extra spaces, um, I think, would make it um, a much more viable uh, operation as far as traffic circulation and things of that that go. Um, I would like to see, however, anything that we can do to have cars go back onto Main Street. Um, and if that includes, you know, doing a uh, left turn only or whatever, we, we've done that before with other properties. And I understand that they don't own the property, so we, we somehow would have to ask the, the owner to do that. I'm not sure how we do that exactly. Maybe just have a signage say, as a courtesy to the Right, residents of Wool, can you please right. turn left only? Turn left. Because of the, the side of the parking lot that they are on uh, would only serve the marijuana place. I assume we would have signs there that would say uh, for uh, the use of the customers of, of your operation. Yeah, I really don't anticipate that it'll be used more than for employee parking. But yeah. uh, we did plan on putting in front of each spot. Uh, I think you required Boom to do something similar, right. right? So they have a small sign, and we're willing to, to duplicate that. And if that's part of the uh, lease agreement, I think that would be a uh, wise idea. I would also 
think that it would be a wise idea to have a camera um, on, on the corner there of the street, uh, of the lot, so that uh, we can monitor that, the usage, and see what, what's happening, what's happening there actually on the streets. Um, it just seems to me to make some sense to have a, a camera overlooking the parking lot. Parking and, lot. Yeah. And also their driveway going back. I mean, quite honestly, we've, we've said that before, that we think that that could become a bottleneck when people are coming and going, trash trucks and et cetera. So we, we, we've talked about it, but this would just be one more. Um, I think people are well aware when a camera is sitting out there that they can see. Just be part of their security. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I, it just seems to me to make some sense to do that. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how that can be written up here as a condition, but it seems to me as though those, those things would mitigate any, any problems. And there were, if there were a problem that comes up, there would be a way of finding out who caused the problem. You could track it back down. Exactly, exactly. Um, to me, that makes a little bit more sense. And, and the argument is that, you, yes, you can use any street in any city and, or in, anywhere, any public street. You can go down there 90 miles an hour if you want. You're going to get a ticket eventually, but you can do it. And that's, that's true anywhere you go. So I, I'm, I'm, and I, too, have not seen any indication, nor in looking at the police reports every month, have I seen any indication of people being pulled over for using uh, marijuana illegally in their cars. I, I just, it, it, there's just no indication. We've had it for two years now. And there's no indication that that happens. So that's, um, you know, another consideration, I think, at this point. I think there was two, two times our officer showed up. Uh, one was a car fire and... One was an accident. Yeah, they yeah. backed into it. Which has, you know, they're not, the indications are that they're not right. lighting up as soon as they walk out the door. And certainly in the parking lot and things like that, yes, the mitigation factors by the entity here as they walk out with, you know, please observe the uh, turning left out of the parking lots and doing those kinds of things and, and also, you know, make sure you use your product safe. Uh, seems to me as though that's the standard procedure. Any other questions on that? I would then take a, uh, yeah, Tony? You're talking about the camera going back here in the back corner to overlook the employee parking. Yeah, you could um, do it in the back corner or the front corner on, on West whatever Street. Whatever works for yeah. your system. I, I'm thinking on West Street, it would serve as a deterrent, too, mm -hmm. frankly. I mean, yeah, slow people down. Yeah, I mean, just it just seems to me as though that would, you know, and it's focused on that additional 18 lots or 18 parking spaces. But you can get a pan camera that will cover up most of that area, in fact. And I know left hand turn, hopefully they, they use it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, with those modifications, then, I will make the motion that we uh, accept uh, special land use review standards A through F. Is there a second? Second. And further discussion? Two voice hold, please. Commissioner Cadwalder? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Commissioner Schrodman? Yes. And Chair Barker? Yes. Andy, uh, will you do the adult use marijuana establishment special land use standards for us? Yes. So starting on page five, first step work. We have adult use marijuana establishment special land use standards. So the six that we went through previously pertain to all special land uses in the city generally. And uh, the following standards apply only to adult use marijuana establishments in the city. So again, I'll just kind of briefly go through these uh, one at a time. Uh, item B, separation distances. So this is the requirement that these establishments be a thousand feet from a preschool or child care center thousand feet from a, a public or private K through 12 school, 500 feet of the C2 district, etc. Um, while I didn't submit a map, we know 
that they satisfy the standard. Um, C odors. So this is the section on odor control where it uh, allow or it requires air scrubbing and carbon fil filtration systems maintain in working order, negative air pressure, doors and windows remaining uh, closed except for when people are going in and going out of the building. Um, so they have submitted an odor control response plan which includes measures for sealing rooms uh, containing marijuana appropriately sized to maintain HVAC system, negative air pressure, insulation of activated carbon filters, etc. Um, so again, these appear sufficient to control orders that might come from the establishment, and it appears that um, the, 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 the retailers don't generate a lot of orders anyway. Um, but we are satisfied with what has been submitted. Item D, uh, the establishment shall be operated such that any byproducts or waste shall be properly and lawfully kept and disposed of so as to preclude any risk of harm to the public health safety or, well, or welfare. Uh, again, the applicant has provided a sanitation and waste, waste disposal plan, which details the measures of disposal for the waste product. Um, this includes procedures in accordance with letter regulations, including uh, rendering waste unusable and unrecognizable prior to being transported from this facility. Um, all waste disposal activities would be done in full view of the surveillance camera and tracked inside the building. The full indoor and outdoor dumpsters would be locked. So that standard is, is met. Um, e, it shall not be operated out of the residence or building used wholly or partially for residential purposes, and that is not the case here. Um, F, any portion of the structure where energy usage and heat would exceed typical residential use, um, it would need to be subject to inspection by the fire department. Um, there uh, are no such products that would be used on the site as typical household cleaners and things like that. Um, item G, the establishment shall not be operated from a business that also sells alcohol, beverages, and tobacco products. They satisfy that requirement, no drive throughs This item H, none are proposed. I require this compliance with the, uh, with the act, uh, which could be addressed as a condition of approval if you are inclined to approve it. J, the planning commission may require additional landscape buffers or screening beyond what is required in section 4.26. Um, well, I don't know that we need to go beyond what's required in 4.26. Uh, this would be appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, to talk about landscaping, uh, fencing, etc. Um, you know, with respect to those items, you know, I think we can, you know, require prior to um, prior to any occupancy for sure that all of the landscaping be installed, uh, any repairs or replacement of fences would have to be completed. And the site plan will have to be fully compliant with what was approved back in October, along with any additional conditions imposed tonight before you know anyone can sign off and they can occupy the building. So that is how I would propose to handle that at this point, unless there are let's let's stop right here then and we'll, we'll go through that. Um, what I saw on the back fence, and I'm assuming that the property owner owns the fence. Um, but there is a, an entire section of it missing at this point. Now, there are um, cement bumpers back there that would prevent anybody from driving through and all of that. But having said that, um, that fence needs to be either fixed and or repaired or replaced. That's on the western property line? I mean, it would be, yes. Okay. And I'm not sure who owns that. I guess that would be a question, but um, there is a zillion centers, but I, I, I don't know that. You want to ask? Yeah. If I recall from the site plan approval, we were only required to put that fence on the south side of the building. That west side of the building was not addressed at the site plan approval. If I recall correctly, I didn't really find anything right now, but we would have put fencing in the background had we been required to do so. We were trying to do everything that the planning commission required to the T. Let me ask you this question. Uh, do you own that fence, the existing fence that's there? The existing fence is on our property. It was not installed by us. Right. It was installed by the Speedway property. Right. 
It is your, on your property, is what I'm saying. It is sitting on your property, as I understand it. Yeah. And there's a whole section there missing, is what I'm saying. And right behind it is a uh, dumpster, and obviously it allows access and things of that nature. My, my take is is that they they should finish that fence off. I, I, I'm not saying you, you need to replace the entire fence with that section. Um, that's that's where I'm at. Are you talking about the chain link fence? No, it's a it's no, a wood it's fence. The wood fence on the south side. Yeah, on, yeah, it's like the wood fence on the south side. I mean, it's 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 open, and there's a section missing. From okay. all states, right? Well, okay. um, our contractor Sean Bowman, um, because that fence lies on our property, and then the uh, the pavement from the Three Brothers strip mall there, mm -hmm. that also. Um, Forget the term he uses, but it, it encroaches on our property as well. The ability for us to use it as a through way is up to the owners of the property of the speedway and the right. strip mall there. So, because the concrete and the pavement is already there, all there is is traffic. There's two traffic concrete things right. posted in the ground. Those could be taken up if we were to get approval for a throughway through there. Obviously, through your approval as well, as a site plan, we never asked for that. Right. But again, that would be requiring us to tear out pavement that's connected to another property's pavement and then put up a fence there. Right. You've also never required us to do that west side. And I, I'm, and, and I'm saying I, I understand what you're saying is that there, there's a it's a driveway is what it is. Mm -hmm. For yes. lack of a better word. Exactly. And all I'm saying is, is that there is a piece of a section of that fence that is missing. I mean, it's just not there. And if you just completed that, I understand you're going to have some pavement back there that's basically useless. I get it. But on the other hand, it encloses your property and it makes it more secure. And yes, you do lose the, the, the use of that pavement. I get that entirely. But to me, it, it makes the property more secure from your standpoint and also from the neighboring property. I understand that fully. Um, neither Loom nor Med's Cafe is fully surrounded by a wall or fencing. And also, you talk about the bottlenecking of the back parking lot of our property. I mean, the ability for the property owner to ask the neighbor property owner to do a throughway or use it as access for their employees would probably help congestion as well. But it wouldn't be necessary. Um, just saying, it's it's requiring us to put up a fence when the marijuana establishment laws require enough um, cameras to view every piece of the property. So I, I'm not saying put up an entire fence. I'm, I'm saying just the one section. One that, section that closes that's, off our that's, ability. That's and, and possibly we could make that um, their decision what they want to do if they want to. Put a driveway, you know, a gate through there, and be able to go out in and out the back way. That's that's their decision. Okay. I'm just saying that it, it needs to be closed off, though. And if they want to use that back part and be able to come in and out that way for their employees, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know how we do that as a tradition. Um, well, if you wanted it to I mean, be easy just to tell them to close it off, that's an easy condition to write. If you wanted to leave it to them as a gate, I guess you could, I mean, you could, you know, give them that option, but then specify, I'm not saying they would do this, but in my experience, sometimes a gate is just a chain that connects here to here, and while you can't drive, well, you could drive through it, but well, it typically deters traffic, it doesn't deter, you know, pedestrians and bicycles.